Okay, I'm going to show you how to access OOI data using ERDAP. This is what the ERDAP homepage looks like, no matter what ERDAP you go to, except for the logo change up here. Um, you can see over here there's a list of uh, 1,655 data sets here. For, so not all of the uh, data is on here yet, not all of the uh, recovered data. And uh, this is just the uncut cable data. But um, uh, and there's still some issues that are being worked on here, but if you find your data uh, here, it's probably the easiest way to get OOI data. So if you come in here, um, you can usually, you can just sort of go click on data sets that you see here. You, know, you can scroll down and see a lot of data sets. Uh, you can do a full text search here, but what I usually do is I go to this advanced search. And let's say I'm looking for, um, let's say, let's pick seawater temperature. So we find it here in the list seawater temperature. And let's say we want to find um, just the Pioneer data. We can click on this map. Um, that enters in some numbers over here. We can type them in there, of course, as well. And let's say, um, let's just look for all the data uh, that's been collected in February. So we can do a search here. And now uh, we'll get back a much reduced um, set of data sets. If we scroll down here, we find that they, there was 11 data sets found um, from Coastal Pioneer. We can see some gliders in here, and we can see some mooring data. Let's say we are going to go after this inshore surface mooring. We can click here on graph. Um, it comes up by default with just a graph of the location, which is not too exciting. So let's switch to lines, um, and let's switch to time on the x-axis. And on the y-axis, let's, uh, let's plot temperature. And so by default, it's going to constrain us to a week. So you can enter in constraints here. You can do a lot of stuff with a graph, but uh, we're just going to click redraw. And there's our data. We see a nice little time series, so it's a nice little preview. Um, and if we go over here to this data set access form, we can now then download that same, um, we have lots of different ways to download that data. So by default, the variables that we had picked there are already selected, but we could add um, some more, like we could add on salinity. And we could also go in here and say like uh, all sorts of constraints, like pick only the seawater temperature values where the QC flag is equal to a certain value. But for right now, we're just going to accept these defaults, and I'll go down here and submit. And by default, we get it back in HTML table here with time, salinity, and temperature that we asked for. If we go back, though, one of the very very popular things about ERDAP is that you can choose from lots of different types of download options. So in here, there's a CSV, there's JSON for web applications. There's a MAT file here from MATLAB. If you go down, there's different kinds of net CDF files, all sorts of different output formats. So for now, let's just to prove that we can download it with some other type. Let's choose CSV and, um, and submit. And now we get it downloaded uh, a CSV file, which of course we can uh, click just to verify that we can open it up in Excel. So that's that's pretty cool. So um, actually, one of the most cool things about ERDAP is that all this clicking around, you may not like this GUI or whatever, but everything you're doing on this GUI is just building up a long URL. So if we go to the end of this URL, we can see here now that the time period that we selected was less than this date. You know, everything that we selected here is in this URL, so you can generate that URL however you want. Um, you can generate it from scripts. You can generate it from Python or MATLAB or R code. And so I just want to demonstrate that here. Um, if you Google on GitHub and reproducible notebooks, you'll find this ERDAP glider search notebook, which is in Python. Um, if you go down here, actually, you can launch that notebook on the web, uh, on the cloud, and just um, access it and run it for your, from your uh own browser and you can modify dates and things but basically so we've entered in the data here just in code and then we do a query to ERDAP um, I'm not going to go through the details here but um, you know you read that data in and you plot it up on a on a map you know and we found these three glider tracks that met the criteria um, and if we go down we can find you know that we actually have the data we can do whatever we want with it plot it up um, and you know and grab the data and plot a vertical transect just to prove that you can do this programmatically. So it's a very powerful uh, tool, and I encourage you to go check it out, and it's going to keep getting better and better with time.